Hello and welcome to Yesteryear's Mac... Um, well, I don't really want to call this one a game. Perhaps it's more of an activity centre, although there's only really one activity. Ah, whatever. Yesteryear's Mac software. Yes, that's a nice catch-all term. Today we're looking at the first iteration of PF Magic's Cats from 1996. Released for PC and Macintosh fairly soon after its canine counterpart, this enables users to interact with a series of textured spheres arranged into the shape of a fluffy quadruped. It was immensely successful, and spawned numerous sequels from PF Magic, who were subsequently swallowed several times over the course of a few years and ended up belonging to Ubisoft. The follow-up versions on computers seem to use the same ball makeup as the first, making me wonder if there was really enough that changed between all five of them to warrant picking up more than one. It must have been easy money, tapping into the lucrative and vast casual market. The fairly widespread modding of the game, or hexing as the community called it, certainly hints to similarities with custom creations compatible with multiple versions. The ball technology got its first spin from PF Magic's debut title, an otherwise unremarkable fighting game for the Mega Drive. Sega had their own stab at this technique with Vectorman, as it was ultimately a very simple way to create fairly impressive visuals on old hardware. Sadly, that trait didn't transfer over to Cats, which looks like it could have run fine on systems below its required 33MHz 68040 for Macintosh, or 50MHz 486 for the PCs. While most boxed Mac titles are fairly uncommon, this and a handful of other applications and games benefit from being a hybrid CD, meaning that all of the 1.5 million copies sold will work on Macs as well as the Windows machines that the vast majority of these would have been purchased to run on. I can't say as to whether my copy has everything in it, but what it does have is a small instructions manual covering install procedures, item details, and a bit on virtual feline behaviour, alongside the game's CD, which is a cardboard sleeve, which is a bit cheap. This luxurious piece of paper houses the game's serial number, and this free post envelope was presumably used to enable users to send a registration card with their personal details to the manufacturer, back when that was a choice. If you have, or had, a copy of this containing other things, like additional cardboard to stop the contents from thrashing around the interior, let me know in the comments. With the CD inserted and ready to install on the 6500, we're going to switch After Dark off, as this has its own screensaver feature which will clash. We'll come back to that in a mo, as I think it requires the user to first select a cat. Starting the program presents the user with a few quick instructions. These are pretty much all that anyone needs to know off the bat, and what isn't here takes but a moment of fiddling with to understand. After that comes the cat selection screen, titled the Cat's Adoption Kit. The five options will poke their heads out of the baskets and make unconvincing cat noises. Goodness knows how these were brought into existence. Perhaps they've been compressed to unrecognisability, or maybe the sound engineer didn't actually have any cats on hand to record and attempted to make the sound effects themselves. An interesting feature is the ability to copy a limited version of the adoption kit to two floppy disks. This is essentially the same demo version of the program that could be found on magazine cover disks. They could then be circulated to some friends who can try out a few of the tools, with the ultimate objective from PF Magic's point of view being to encourage them to buy a copy themselves. It's a clever sneak-away distribution method, utterly indicative of its time. The five cats to choose from have various different personalities, which amount to being more or less likely to do particular things. Their arrangement of circles also differ slightly, as well as the colour, although they can be customised to a certain extent. All the bits and pieces for playing with the cat sit on the shelving on the right. The demo version limits what is here, but the full edition gives access to everything before and after one has selected a cat, so there's technically not much of a reason to pick a cat, which results in leaving the adoption centre and losing access to the other four. The only added functionality is customising the background with a selection of tiles, or allowing the cat to run around the desktop itself. I was disappointed with the latter. I was hoping the cat might run around the desktop while I interacted with other things on it. Perhaps cooperative multitasking isn't up to that. The documentation states that the cat will grow older and change its behaviour after a few days, but I tried setting the max clock forward a week and didn't really see much difference. Back to the shelves then. From top to bottom we have a paint bucket to customise the colour of a cat. Obviously it doesn't quite work like that in real life, that would prompt a visit from animal welfare. The problem with this virtual paint tool is that the cat won't stay still, which I suppose adds a touch of realism. I tried to add a dab of red to the feet here only for the cat to unexpectedly scarper, directly past and under the brush, completely dousing itself. Darn cat. The spray bottle is a method of stopping the cat from doing something it shouldn't be doesn't wash off paint, and next to that is a massive play button. Hmm, clearly that's incorrect. Perhaps if I interact with it. Oh, bug spray. How ironic. The final top shelf item is this plant of catnip, 
which upon consumption has a short-lived inebriative effect. Next shelf down is a few toys. The fluffy thing on a wire is fairly hands-off, but the other two can be yeeted around the screen for the cat to chase. Below these is a block of cheese and a squeaky doll. The cat sort of bats them around. The brush grooms, that seems to go down rather well. And the box of treats enables the user to reward the cat for good behaviour. On the last shelf is food, water and a bottle of milk. It's not actually advisable to give cats milk, as most of them are lactose intolerant. Even a modest amount of bovine lactate can result in a colossal mess. That, thankfully, is not part of the simulation. Also down the bottom shelf is a little hole. Unless boarded up, a mouse will occasionally pop out, scuttle around the screen, get assaulted and let out some rather awful noises as a result. Ugh. Just like a real cat, the simulated one will torture the poor thing a bit before either the user takes it off them or they get bored. Or in my case, when I got bored. I found that interacting with the cat was mildly entertaining for about 20 minutes. But then again, I'm not the target audience. I mentioned I was going to look at this one to one of my friends, and it turned out she had fond memories playing this at a relative's house back in the day. For youngsters who weren't allowed a real cat, or whose real cat was not particularly social and would only interact with humans on their own terms, I'm sure this will no doubt have been a lot of fun. Beyond this, there are a few other bits and pieces that the package contains. The ability to take a screenshot of the cat, for instance, probably to import into a paint app, is a neat idea. But just like with the paint bucket, you have to get the timing right, as it captures the cat doing whatever it's doing when the button is pressed. It took me a few attempts to get a good one. 6k of disk space. Oof, steady on. Also present is the Catnaps screensaver. Like other screensavers for classic macOS, this requires popping an extension into the systems folder, which will then activate either on command or after a set duration of time to reduce screen burn-in, which computer monitors of the time had to alleviate. See my video on After Dark 4 for a better explanation of that. In summary then, Cats is a compelling package. Not for me, but the product was well received and sold well. I can understand why. In comparison to other popular pet simulators of the 90s, such as Tamagotchis, this is feature rich. I will say that all the screen capture I needed for this was recorded in 35 minutes, which is absolutely the kind of mileage one can expect from this nowadays. It's not going to be of any interest beyond that, fond memories or otherwise. So we'll leave it here. For more content on classic Mac games and some other stuff, do explore the rest of the channel and subscribe to keep on top of future content. Thanks for watching, take care, and see you next time.